Welcome to the lab. All right. I'm your host, right. Pakam Pado. If you would like to support this podcast, you can do so by buying my t-shirt. Link is in the description. My guest today is Rafael Samuel, a.k.a. Nihil Anand. He's my favorite Nihilist alive. <laughs> He's also an anti-natalist. And this is his second time on the podcast. So, Rafael, welcome back. Good to have you here. Thank you. Good to be back. I really find you one of the best podcasters alive. <laughs> <laughs> so how are you man how are things i'm going very well i mean uh the kind of response i had taken a break for a month and a half mm. and uh people really missed me and you know they were messaging me and uh, when i came back people were like wow you're back it's really nice to see the kind of love you know and uh Right now, I'm planning to start a new phase of Nihil Anand, which is called Nihil Ed. So, I've just started off with a few videos where I'm just teaching people about, you know, just things that they're not taught in school, how things about life. So, things are quite well. Yeah, they're good. Uh, so, what have you been up to during this break? Why did you take this break? Uh, I was uh, basically, I had gone to something called Narmada Parigrama, uh, which uh, was, it was kind of a religious thing. And, uh, you know, you're supposed to shave your head and you're supposed to wear a dhoti and uh, do a lot of stuff. Uh, it was basically a very hard life. You're just walking by the Narmada. And I did not appreciate it as much as I thought I would. I came back like in 10, 15 days. And then after that, I went on, you know, various treks, went out to meet people, explored a little bit of India, you know, to make up for that. And that is basically what I'd been doing, you know, going around, going on treks, going on hikes, jungle, etc. Okay. So that was a religious thing. What is your opinion yeah. on religion? <laughs> um, I think it's useful from a ruler's point of view. But uh, it's not something that anyone should take seriously at all. But the re- the, it's because people take life so seriously that religion is so successful. And although it started with the idea of mysticism, but then it just became politics. And that is the that is the end of all mysticism. Like if anyone tells you something uh, that makes sense about life, you take that thread and you eventually make it into politics. I, I can guarantee you that if Nihil Anand becomes famous enough, in the next hundred years, it's going to become something political. So, Yeah. I mean, yeah, they'll, they'll build a mandir in your name. They'll take you, they'll kill in your name. How would you feel about that? <laughs> uh, I wouldn't care. I'd love the chaos. <laughs> just, just as long as there's chaos. So, what is the alternative to religion? Is atheism the alternative? I think uh, agnosticism, in the sense of uh, you must be, you must be truthful to yourself and say, "I don't know." Like, if there is a god, I don't know. Uh, if there is any power beyond me, I don't know. Maybe if I can feel it, but then you also have to know to what extent you feel it, to yeah. what extent you've experienced it, and that is that should be the limit of your religion, entirety of your religion. Same here, man. I, I'm an agnostic too. I used to be an atheist. Like, in, uh, I, I think my atheism was a reaction to my parents because my parents were forcing their religious beliefs and their culture on me. They would be like, follow this. I'd be like, why should I follow this? Why should I believe in this? They'd be like, because that's right. what our elders said. That's what our ancestors said. I said, no, I don't believe in this. I'm an atheist. And then I gradually right. toned down and uh, I thought, even neo-atheism, not atheism, but neo-atheism, you know, this, uh, all these atheist intellectuals like Sam Harris and all, they brought this movement. I mm. don't like that also because that is like uh, Abrahamism without a God. Because there also you tend to mock people who are religious and you try to form, uh, even among atheists, uh, mm. there are things that you can't say. Because if you do say, they'll get offended. So I thought atheism right. is also becoming a sort of a religion. And that's why I moved to agnosticism. That, uh, even right. agnosticism is not something that I, I don't call myself an agnostic. I just am naturally. Right. Right. You just happen to be. People yeah. tend to forget the definition and they start trying to make a religion out of it. You know? If you are something, you are something. Then, then, of course, giving it a name and trying to make it more civilized and all. So, yeah, even uh, technically, I'm not, I don't call myself an agnostic. I'm just like, whatever I experience, I will believe. Is that simple. And even even that, I won't believe. Believe is like saying that, you know, this is there. I know it. I just know it. You know? So that, that is what people should think of life as. 
what is your uh, you know some even when i talk about religion in india they they you know people say that we are secular we treat all religions mm-hmm. equally and atheists say all religions are equally bad i don't believe that right. i believe that some religions are worse than other religions for example i find buddhism to be mm-hmm. nearly perfect i i think other religions are far worse well i think uh, it depends on what is worse in the sense of see uh, is one is try basically religion na is a problem solving technique right uh, like it, it starts with mysticism and someone is saying someone is basically trying to solve your life problem that's all so buddha buddha is saying get out uh, mohammed in a way is saying get out jesus is saying get out he's basically saying get out of the world okay and then what happens is that then they try and solve your problems of the world so later people are like you know i cannot get out i'm not that evolved i cannot experience god obviously because uh, spirituality is a very personal thing so it's not something that you know you discovered the light bulb and you gave it to everybody it's something that you've discovered and then you're trying to explain to everybody what it is and people will not get it because people in general are quite uh, stupid if i may say so uh, try trying to i'm sorry what was the question i lost there there is no question this is it is we were just ah. randomly talking you yeah, i was yeah, just yeah. saying like some religions i feel are better again ah, you know yes, this yes, is yes, purely yes. subjective this is from my perspective it's not i don't think these things can be measured in an objective way yeah 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 so uh, so it it became a problem solving technique right and uh, each each religion had its own problem solving technique for example a uh, christianity uh, later became mea culpa mea culpa my fault okay everything is my fault and must work hard and get forward um whereas uh, judaism said that you know study 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 and study the problem through uh, so each one had their own type of thing like uh, hinduism overall just basically said chill you know things will map happen it's your karma whatever uh, buddhism islam we know we know all the uh, extremes of it so what they are trying to do is just solve problem is the only question here is which is the smarter way of solving the problem you know t- today if they say there there these conspiracies that jews rule the world and you know they do this and they do that why is that because they have the education and education means leverage simple so e- even if when you are encouraging someone right uh, if suppose the problem solving method is violent the violent people will become more violent right and the people who are at the top of the intellectuality will be used uh, will will tend to use their in, uh, intellectuality towards violence okay on the other hand uh, if you are in a religion which believes that uh, education is a good thing then uh, the people who even the most bottom of that uh, of that pile of people come to an average level okay because education is the education is there. and the geniuses will become even more genius the stalwarts will become geniuses the average will reach the top level you know it's just that so it's it's all about where you are what culture is pulling you where that's all yeah uh, i uh, like the example that you give of these conspiracy th- uh, theorists who say that jews uh, rule the world and then they drag it so much conspiracy theories man i love some of them but i hate some of them like, some of the conspiracy theories are worth entertaining like when someone says hey you know maybe uh john f kennedy was murdered by uh, someone from the government or if they say mm. so- something uh, on that line it's believable and then on the other extreme you have conspiracy theorists who will say the earth is flat and that's something that's you know that's insanely no- inaccurate uh, what kind of re- uh, reaction do you have to the modern conspiracy theorist i mean uh, they are certainly fun uh, in in the sense of earth is, earth is flat i don't consider a conspiracy theory i think it is just a reaction to the the way science is evolving and you know how people's uh, beliefs are being threatened uh, it is just an extreme reaction to that so it's like a child you know it's like atheism where people are saying oh this is the extreme now now my extreme something like that so that is okay but uh, someone who makes up these stories about you know how the government is this and some of it is true like in the sense of partially true you know uh, uh, the reality is always somewhere between what comes in the news and a conspiracy so it's fun to hear it and it's fun to think of the version and it's fun to discuss it but the uh, you know the truth is that the people at the top are not as smart as we give them credit for 
and they are all they are pretty greedy and lusty and the same as us it's just that they are doing it at another scale yeah yeah, yeah. uh you know we have a different reaction towards religion compared to the normal person a normal person is very religious they're swayed by religion a right. person like me or even a person like you is not very religious the advantage of religion is that it provides a, a sense of community you get to celebrate christmas or diwali you go every friday to your mosque or your temple or your church since we have somewhat abandoned uh, religion or old uh, or older ways of thinking if we we went abandoned culture we don't have uh, a sense of community we don't have like minded people in this uh, in the in these times when uh, people like us are deemed as uh, or at least people like me are deemed as uh, outcasts or weirdos how do we find like minded uh, people and form a community firstly i think uh, when when they say that you know you don't have a sense of community and that you'll never have friends i think it's because people did not really have an option at that point of time uh, they did not have netflix they did not have tv they did not really have uh, that level of games or sports so you know at the best there was the gladiator sport or whatever and you had a few plays and all but overall there was nothing else that could keep us entertained which is why religion became so powerful now the numbers of religion are declining at a rate never seen before why is that because who's going to bother to get up on the church on sunday when you can find exactly like minded people uh, on a group on facebook or on reddit or where you can talk with them so that is one thing secondly we can always find a community online like there are so many people who have similar ideas okay and you if you're willing to travel a little bit you can go there it's all about the choices you're willing to make so would you rather be in a religion with people who you don't really like just because you want a sense of community that's obsolete now that is obsolete so you want, if you want to make a little more effort then yes end this religion thing uh, it's basically an excuse to party but you have better options to party today so just find them stop being lazy you know yeah yeah um and uh, you, you know since you talk a lot about parents uh, and their relationship with their children and how, why uh, children must rebel the one word mm-hmm. that parents use a lot to almost enslave their children is culture like you must follow this because ah. this is our culture you can't question this right. parampara and uh, all these mm-hmm. words especially here in india how do we rebel uh, against the enslavement of culture i think we must first understand it in the mm-hmm. sense of culture in tradition and all these ideas why were they passed down they were passed down because there was no other way of passing things down uh, so that's why they ins- even caste that's why they insisted that you know the goldsmith's uh, daughter marry the goldsmith why is that because she already knew the skill and she had the secrets of the trade they did not want to share that with say a uh, and uh, someone who smelts iron or a man who makes cloth right so the secrets of the skill uh, was passed down from generation to generation and then you're cre- you're making it stronger you're putting in experience you're putting in advice and all that so it became a monster much larger than was needed even for survival for that matter what kind of food needs to be eaten and what kind of uh, you know uh, herbs need to be eaten when you're sick and what kind of sickness all these things were a part of tradition and at that time not many things were written down so that therefore you generally had one or two major books that people listen to because writing was so wow so that uh, all this is now obsolete now this concept of culture and all you can create your own culture you can google it you can research it for yourself you can check out scientific papers you can understand things for yourself so uh, culture is gone the idea of culture is gone it will take a little more time in society for culture to go but by the time we have at least in india by the time we have social systems uh, security system set up okay by the time we are more confident about ourselves this whole idea of culture caste all this will be gone by then yeah uh, so you know children who disagree with their parents and children who feel uh, traumatized by their parents what should they do should should these children abandon their parents yes absolutely absolutely like uh, you owe your parents nothing okay and someone who has tortured you in fact i i say go one step further and go to war against 
like i i made an entire neelanand education video on this where i said uh, you know it's it's time to go to war on your parents and literally go against them with the four principles of war like first consider them the enemy and then say sam dam dhand bed so it's like uh, love money uh, punishment and division the, with these four this with these four weapons you can go against them now if you want to just leave them that's very classy of you. i respect that even i would do that uh, but if you want to go to war against them that's your thing if you want to leave them great make sure you're financially independent or take money from them or rob money from them doesn't matter if you don't want to do that also great like just just leave be classy about it you know exit live your own life enjoy yeah do you have any practical tips for youngsters who want to move out of their parents uh, control i think basically you have to build a uh, um uh, cash like that that's all that really matters out there and you have to build a uh, survival skill you have to understand like if you're very protected or you know there, there are instances so many instances of abused children or neglected children for that matter who are extremely protected like they are fed well they are in the room everything is given to them but they are not treated well that's the only thing and in fact uh, especially neglectors they are very careful about you know giving enough to the child so that it doesn't leave because they like that whole energy sometimes even abusers do that so um, in both cases what you have to do is basically build a bunch of money and build a bunch of skill so that that money is not taken away and of course you can live a much better life go out learn talk to people build a bunch of friends don't trust anybody that's the main thing don't trust anybody just assume that okay this person is going to betray you this that person is going to betray you and go out in the world with that idea so that anything that happens will not shock you because uh, if your parents have protected you too much a lot of things are going to shock you and i'm not i cannot say you're going to 100% learn everything but at least be basically prepared for the disappointments that life is going to give you because it may just be harder outside than it is for you inside yeah i think uh... over protected children are so vulnerable towards external issues when they come out of that house when they come out of that bubble and when they see others not fulfilling mm. their needs or others not behaving like their daddy and mommy like like they right. feel uh, they have a sense of entitlement also because their daddy and mommy took such good care of them when they come out yeah. and when they see that others are like nah whatever i don't care about you they're like holy shit why is this happening to me yeah i yeah, absolutely i uh, i had this friend who who you know he he went on the first day of his uh, uh, job and it was one of the big four and he just walked into the office and he's like but no one was even looking at me and i'm like what did you expect like you know did you expect everyone to dance around you like they do in karan johar movies uh, and then there's this other story of uh, a very famous rockefeller kid or something and they had built everything for him inside the compound there was a playground a slide a swing everything and one day by mistake someone left the gate open and he just wanted to see what the outside world is and he ran out boom car you know so either ways it's just a bad thing to protect your child to any extent like let the child have some limits but that's it you know for everything else let the child grow uh what do you what do you think about uh, the government's uh, new decision to increase a woman's uh, age of marriage from 18 to 21 i think it has pros and cons in a, in a society like india it will have more cons than pros because uh, people will always find a way to take advantage of things as they have always done so and no matter the the intentions of the government it's going to take a turn for the ugly because the uh, you know pe- uh, people are going to get their ma- daughters married younger and younger yes the number of chil- uh, number of girls that are being married under 18 are reducing year by year and it's come down to i think some 25% or something of all the women who are married and a lot of those marriages are not going to be legal so wh- when you make it to 21 the woman is going to be even more of a liability because people are people still don't understand that you know that the wo- that the girl can actually be an asset that she can actually work and that she can make money so it's going to be worse and worse like you may just increase a uh, female feticide you may just or even infanticide for that matter you may increase a lot of other things like negative things that are happening to women yeah you know i have a different uh, 
perspective on this i think they should in, the decrease the age of marriage for men okay. to 18 okay. and the reason is if you want gender equality reduce it to 18 because people are going to get married anyways i don't see the point yeah. of raising it to 21 when people are not going to obey these rules and then some people say hey you know at 18 people are not mature enough to get married i'm mm. almost 30 and i'm not mature enough to get married i don't know <laughs> if i'll ever get married but you know I agree. that that's just my life i don't know if so- someone else might be 18 and be uh, more mature than me so if they want to get married that's their prerogative that's how i look at it <laughs> but there's another feminist angle to this as well they say that this will improve uh this will give more opportunities to women this will uh, help help them fight the patriarchy is this possible in certain pocket uh yes i mean i mean remotely it's very difficult to think of how exactly but uh, yeah maybe but not at a widespread enough scale and you know uh, maybe not without the help of ngos I, i don't know how doing this alone will will you know help unless you strengthen the laws or unless you decide to really start putting some people in jail and i won't be surprised this is also a tool to control the people you know but in i don't see any other option but the people being controlled but the people you know being thrashed and put into jail for this for reasons like this because they just don't get the point what is the point the point is that you have to society is up to you to create right mm-hmm. and that what you have to do is that you have to realize that both men women everyone they are all assets in their own way and at least that is the foundation that our country country was based on right uh, when we were giving uh, peop- when we were giving a universal franchise we did not even think about whether we should give it to women or not we just said yeah everyone all of society right so we are based on that idea that everyone is an asset everyone can be used and everyone must work together to create a country so we should realize that more than any, and me, most of the men if you see in the villages like they may be doing a little hard work here and there but so many of them are drunkards they're just chilling out you know so the your daughter is actually more useful to you than your son mm-hmm. and you know and women tend to biologically also they tend to take life much more seriously because they realize that they are indispensable to the uh, uh, to forwarding the line right because if they die the children will die it's not just them dying um so that's what society needs to realize you know that women in fact have much more use and i i know it's the wrong way of looking at it from the usefulness point of view but that is all they really care about most parents are just about what use is the child to me and your daughter is much more much more useful than your son that that simple yeah not just parents uh, even society and even government looks at individuals as just usable or disposable assets but individuals uh mm-hmm. try to protest against that try to protest against how parents look at them how society and how government looks at them they don't want to be looked only on the basis of usability or disposability they want to be looked at uh, from a different way they want to rule themselves than to be ruled by government or society or by the government do you think individuality will ever prosper mm-hmm. in a society like this no uh, in any society it will not prosper because unfortunately we are all just object okay whether we like it or not uh, the only thing is like you have to calculate someone even if let's say there's a very very tiny society somewhere in a jungle right everyone is looking at that person as to what that person can bring to me right mm. even if there is an elder person and uh, he cannot move walk hunt whatever uh, grow food Uh, and you're feeding him you're only feeding him out of your pity you don't care about the person really so we are all looking at each other as object okay and objects of survival so just accept that and move on that's all right then there's nothing wrong in being trying to called an object because you are <laughs> oh <laughs> I, I, this will again piss off the feminists because they always say that women are objectified uh women are oh, looked men, at as men are all objects <laughs> yeah we are also objects only yeah i don't see i don't see any problem in being objectified because that's what we are we are objects they say that women shouldn't be seen as sexual objects but both women and men are sexual objects biologically 
<laughs> speaking so i don't right no uh, what i want to ask another thing that i want to ask is uh, what is your opinion uh, on feminism itself on feminism okay so the way fe- feminism is right like today uh, where it is basically i think we spoke about this last time also uh, where where it is basically uh, asking for rights okay mm-hmm. saying that you know uh, give me rights uh, i saw i just saw a post on desi feminist it says it pisses me off when my mother stands by and uh, serves my uncle while his patriarchy uh, you know he he's sitting there taking all the patriarchal respect he doesn't deserve or it pisses me off when my mother uh, eats last or something like that you know and i'm like but why doesn't it piss you off when your mother is letting this happen like if you're letting it happen people are going to take advantage why not it is like saying a country doesn't have an army and now i am pissed off the other country took over but your country didn't have an army why should i why should i restrain myself okay the nature of life and the nature of nature is that it it is taking over each other animals you think they care about all this feminism and all if you're weak you're weak if you're strong you're strong okay so in, even in animals there is poisoning killing rape all these things are there so why why do you expect humans to be any different in fact we are more vicious yeah you know fair fair another thing is that uh, parents have a lot of expectations uh, from their kids they have a lot of uh, dreams and aspirations for their children so papa ka naam roshan karna zaruri hai kya papa ka naam roshan karna hai uh, absolutely not in fact mm-hmm. i had made a video saying that uh, you must absolutely destroy your family's reputation if they really obsessed are if they are really obsessed with reputation they absolutely go against them be a full on rebel okay i was recently questioned by one section of my family uh, where they are like no you're not taking forward the name and this and that and i said i don't care like i am not here to impress you guys and you guys yourself are not very impressive people like if you all were impressive and famous and rich or something you know give me some skill talent major and then i would have thought about it like i would have thought of listening to you maybe but even you all are not so like who are you to say anything to me you know? that you want to continue the line on what basis <laughs> yeah i you know sometimes uh, parents and teachers tell their children uh, you're a disappointment to me i feel like telling them have you ever wondered if you're a disappointment to them and exactly uh, yeah and uh, when like uh, it's like papa ka naam roshan karo but papa ne khud ka naam roshan kiya kya like exactly. did you make your own <laughs> exactly you know i, I feel like uh, uh, fathers or mothers who expect their children to make their uh, name roshan are absolute losers mm. because they have outsourced the glorification to someone else so why can't you do it yourself absolutely in that three years that farhan's father mm. he himself he himself earns 25000 rupees and all his entire thing all his life is that my son will become an engineer and then he will earn what what if you're dead by then dude like seriously don't get yeah you know and uh... in india in the past uh, few years in the past mm. two years especially there has been an increase in uh, depression loneliness mm. uh, mental health problems suicides amongst this uh, covid circus and uh, as right. per ncrb data in 2020 more people died of suicides than of covid 19 uh, what do you make of all this are you surprised by this uh wow this is interesting data i did not know this i'm not surprised by this uh, because people are very uh, like they have an image of life right they have a thought process related to life and it is all it's all an illusion uh, especially when it comes to the future you know that in the future i'll be free i'll be so happy i'll have money i'll do this i'll do that whatever so all these illusions are basically coming home to roost and when that happens eventually uh, when that is a person's life okay and you attach yourself so desperately to that you are already dead you have already killed yourself it's not it's not about you actually using the rope or uh, you know slashing a wrist or anything that that is just symbolic but when you've already made that your life it's already over so basically i hope that a large part of india has learned that these illusions do not make sense like it's just they don't exist simply so stop trying to make them exist stop trying to force them on anybody or yourself mm. what is freedom mm. <laughs> i think freedom 
in my opinion is freedom from everything in the sense of absolute nothingness death no nobody ness uh the less you have the more free you are because i just put a status up today i said on the days that i don't want to live are the days that i find the most freeing you know because it i have an attachment to nothing and i'm just there i'm just free uh, even uh, two days ago there was an interview and somebody asked me that you know um, your friends find you the most they, they find you extremely happy and uh, they don't think you'll ever uh, go for euthanasia and i said happiness and wanting to live are two different things because i don't want to live i am happy because i am done with the illusion of life i am happier than everyone that does not mean i will not go for euthanasia at the first drop of a hat because i'm done i'm just done but i am happy because i'm out of the illusion of life so freedom is the lack of illusions at at the earth level it's the lack of illusion for sure okay is uh, mental slavery a choice mental slavery is definitely a choice unless you're hypnotized or drugged that's a whole different thing but um if you are of normal brain structure if you are of uh, basically like you're not uh, um, and you don't have medical conditions underlying conditions anything like that then yes mental slavery is a choice yeah yet a lot of people choose to be mentally slaves why do they choose oh, yes. why do they choose that it is extremely addictive because what happens is uh, uh when you actually go out like in the beginning we had talked about uh, you know how how uh, children want to exit but i said sometimes going out there is harder than being in here so dealing with all that people don't want to deal with all that they are extremely scared and they said you know uh, okay now i have to deal with say one bad boss or you know uh, a bad wife or like two three bad people maximum in my life right out there i'll have to deal with so many people at least that is the fear the truth is you only have to deal with yourself you only have to be in control of yourself and uh, that is why people prefer they don't realize this and that is why people prefer mental slavery over freedom another thing another thing causing uh, mental slavery i would say is uh, abdication of uh, personal responsibility a lot of people have given up personal responsibility they don't want to uh take responsibility for their own happiness or for their own um, thinking capacity they have outsourced their thoughts to someone else they have adopted someone else's opinion they have adopted someone else's culture someone else's religion and slavery has become so convenient to them yeah yeah because uh, what happens is when the survival instinct meets neural loop uh, these two things combine and they become extremely dangerous and then then they just sort of put you in that same loop that okay survival is your stay survival is your stay like you know be a good dog basically so that is why uh, they just take what is convenient and what works and what easily gives them the most amount of money basically nutrition and they just stick with that and try not to you know uh, stake claim for more yeah how to escape society and their expectations <laughs> uh well unless someone is physically restraining you right or trying to inject you with something or something everything is just you it is only a game you are playing with yourself so what you have to realize is that society is trying to make you a a part like itself a part in your own play that means even when society is not around you are still thinking about society why is you are in a jungle you are still thinking about society you're walking on the road you're still thinking about society why are you thinking about society because they have brainwashed you so well that you still believe they exist when they're not around and what you have to deal with is only the thought process in yourself because the truth is for you only you exist everything else like you cannot you are not seeing me where i am you are only seeing an image of me you're seeing the light which is reflecting on your eyes right so as far as you're concerned i don't exist right unless i come there and hit you then maybe i'm a problem that exists but overall like when most people who are not hit and not abused and not tortured society is just a concept in their head which they have to solve with themselves and once they get over then they'll be free yeah so many structures and illusions that we have built for ourselves a lot of people are trying to literally escape society as in they're trying to go and uh, live off the grid 
uh, what do you uh, what is your opinion on off grid living uh i i don't think off grid living will help if you're trying to get away from society yes if you get away if you're already done with society and then you then you walk away that's a whole different thing but uh, trying to live off grid does not mean that the compulsion uh that the fears that the desires have have let go of you you may try it and you may be even successful but at some point of time it is going to catch up with you it is an energy uh all these fear desires whatever it is an energy that is going to catch up with you in some way or the other it may affect your body it may affect your mind or if someone shows up from your past it may affect you then uh but try not to this so anyway and about um, living outdoors or living you know in the wild i would not do it if someone can do it and if someone is ready for it then yes i would totally recommend it like do what you want really what is your opinion on anarchy living without authority ah i love anarchy as a concept um yes it will be a dangerous life and uh, it will be you know it it will not be safe for many people but i think that you keep people much more switched on you know much more uh, much less dependent on the government and in such a this uh, i even believe feminists would not ask for rights they would just take them uh so like i like i hope they should and that's it yeah anarchy would keep us much more switched on as human beings as animals as everything yeah yeah hey, parents a lot of parents and a lot of teachers they they are very tyrannical they try to take away a children's rights to express themselves and they do all of this under the guise of good intentions <laughs> how how do you feel about their good intentions see uh being strict is important it's it's not even a problem but you must be you must tell the child why you are being strict um like i was always told why you know like in the sense of if there was a fire right someone had lit a bonfire sub- suppose and i wanted to touch it so my mother would be see you can touch it but what's going to happen is you're going to get burned and it's not going to feel good so i'm like no i still want to touch it so she like okay wait i'll give you a small version of this and uh, let's say i light a match or or a lighter or something you know why don't you touch that see if you like it and then you decide if you want to touch the fire so uh, i'd be like okay and if i touch that the small one i'd be like oh this is not a good idea similarly uh, what parents should do is they should just tell the child raising a child should be just like this is good for you and this is bad for you unless the child is very very young that's a whole different thing but uh, i think when the child reaches uh, an age of 6 or 7 after that it should be a concept of understanding that this see this could be bad for you and it could be bad for your objective like your, uh, what is your objective to live life as long as possible to live well to live healthy right it is going to hamper that objective that's it and i think a child will understand i definitely understood uh you know a lot of uh, children have unending argument with their parents and uh, this is a slightly controversial question but you are used to these kind of questions should <laughs> should a frustrated child commit suicide just to get back at uh, their parents oh wow a uh, beautiful question i wouldn't uh, i wouldn't say no to that like if someone really uh, you know uh, if the parents really care about the kid and uh, if there is this whole you know they, they don't they simply don't understand what is going on like they're just too indulgent and they're like no we're giving you everything what's the problem mm-hmm. and the kid really wants to do that then yeah go ahead i would i wouldn't say no to that but uh, if they are that way in either i i'd say take advantage of them or uh, you know or try to make them understand as much as possible in as many ways as possible get some help get a counselor you know there are many options before you do the final um the final act and and as i always say train to aati jaati rehti hai so anything happen like you can always end it later 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 so just chill understand what is going on try and reconcile with it and then go if you need to uh a lot of people are going to get angry at this podcast and at you in general okay, okay. and you are used of to it course. again okay a lot of right. people are going to say who are these two crazy people especially what is wrong with this neela anand guy they are going to say uh, my parents were so good i am a parent and i am good as a parent how can you guys be cursing parents and uh, uh, talking ill about uh, how to fight against parents what's wrong with you people how would you react to a question like that 
well uh, there has been a covert war against children for centuries now and especially in the last 30 no let's say 60 70 years uh, against indian children the, the covert war not just covert has been overt mm. like people have been uh, uncles have been discussing in parks how to make their children engineers and one has been shaming the other and the other has been saying mine got 97% and and your children are committing suicide what is what is this if not war against children yeah. and why shouldn't we plan something openly at least we are doing it openly you all are doing it covertly so yeah i'm proud of what i'm doing <laughs> you you know interesting thing about uh, education and suicide uh, just a few months ago an article came iisc in bangalore uh, removed all the fans from their hostel because they had a high uh, suicide rate <laughs> oh yeah i know i saw that that was so funny and 5 years ago apparently rakshi sawant had suggested the same thing and everyone yeah. laughed at her <laughs> amazing amazing that's so that's basically like only treating the symptoms not looking at the real sickness let's get rid of yeah, the fans yeah. we, we never do that as indians we never do that yeah. um how would you make the case for legalizing the suicide and euthanasia in india i would very simply say for oh, there are so many advantages to it firstly if someone does not want to live you're saving on medical expenses okay you're saving on uh, if you're a government employee you're saving on pension you're saving on so many like other relative relative expenses uh, you're saving on the burden on ele- of electricity that means you're basically saving on coal you're basically he's not going to he or she is not going to buy petrol so you're saving on petrol expenses so many crazy advantages that you're getting straight up from this first not existing so uh, understand at least if you don't understand any other language if you don't understand the language of pain if you don't understand the language of someone uh, you know wanting their basic rights or someone owning their own life at least understand the, the language of economics at least understand the language of money and see how much money you're making from a person simply not being there and even even the expenses that the family is going to bear they'll have more disposable income to spend if that person is not sick and lying in bed for 15 years which will help your economy so get that point it's a very simple point but uh, these things are not very objective the, the reason why they don't want to let their family member commit suicide obviously is because they love them and love is an emotion that's very strong Uh, so they wouldn't oh. want to let them go and i know that this is a selfish thing but that's how it is you see love is a emotion that has been scripted for centuries and even today there are various scripts around the world so mm. people don't really understand love in its entirety firstly it's a chemical uh, and most of it is oxytocin so oxytocin is one that bonds you with uh, someone else and uh, people rarely let go of that bond now how you handle the bond is completely upon the culture there are cultures in southeast asia uh, or i think indonesia one of these two places uh, i think it's the same thing but uh, where there is that there are tribes which eat their parents and if you tell them that eating your parents is wrong when they are, when they die when when they are dead uh, if you tell them eating your parents is wrong they say how dare you dishonor my parents how dare you dishonor the lineage you know so that is their kind of love uh there are some cultures which will let their parents die there will su- there are some cultures in india in tamil nadu for that matter or i'm sure in so many rural areas where uh they they not only let the parents die but they encourage their death it is kind of it's called thalai kutal it is kind of a suicide ritual uh so for them that is a question of honor and if anyone complains in that village they will ostracize that person to the extent that elders have accepted this as a ritual this is how i'm going to die you know and they choose it there are 26 ways of doing it nowadays they choose it so it has become a thing of it's become a very normal thing there is no question of uh, you know like saying that there is love and all that it is just it's a very scripted version of love i won't let you go is a very scripted version of love if you explain to people that actually letting the person go is a much more benevolent thing to do and at least my point is at least give them a choice like at least say okay you can let the person go or don't let the person go and let them lie in bed but that is your choice not something you have to do yeah um and when i said love you said love is just a chemical reaction like an oxy oxycotin 
there are so uh, many chemicals so, yeah. uh, in our uh, brain like the chemical that you mentioned and dopamine and serotonin are our emotions right. and are our feelings purely objective and based on chemicals or do you think there is uh, room for subjectivity here as well well uh there is the question of experience in the sense of oh, so there is this theory where uh Uh, science has not yet been able to understand experience right so you see a beautiful sunset and technically you are just seeing colors in a certain uh, spectrum you are seeing uh, maybe there are birds around so you are hearing in a certain spectrum and you are seeing the colors and you know and but the actual experience of existence cannot be uh, you know codified by science it cannot be pulled down into a scientific model now whether that's a scientific flaw or whether that's an actual thing i don't know or whether it doesn't exist at all and we are just experiencing we are just hallucinating in a way i don't really know but i feel that uh, when you when you're talking about uh, chemicals and all i think it's all chemicals i think it's all can be codified it all can be controlled by you entirely it can your, your it's completely your understanding of life uh, if you were working for a suicide helpline number and if someone called you to say that they they're planning to end their life how would you respond uh i would i would ask them why like my question would be more i'd be more interested in why exactly and and don't do it for stupid reason you know like i lost money or i i my girlfriend left me or something like that or i'm really depressed depressed is a good reason because that that's a chemical problem now what the thing is as i would firstly try and ask them to understand their life completely like understand what is going on take some time off you know and uh, get get the entirety of what is happening do not do it because of one reason and one very physical reason you know someone died in my family uh, like uh, try and understand why exactly you are feeling that way try and understand the entirety of that emotion try and understand where your life is and then if you really want if it makes sense to you in all those manner go ahead go ahead how would you react if someone close to you committed suicide oh i did react badly once uh, it was quite a few years ago actually it was a close friend of mine uh, but after that that sort of formed my views on suicide like if someone really wants to do it then they they have the right to do it it is their life have you heard of this uh, concept of transhumanism uh can you explain it to me because i i know it and i've kind of read about it but i kind of forgot exactly what it is Uh, now you know a lot of people have started putting microchips into their uh, body oh, and with that they can unlock their phone and everything and eventually right. you know someone like elon musk is planning to put a brain chip which will make you more productive and you can uh, even have uh, virtual uh, lenses and uh, pe- people can start dating in the virtual world and all that stuff right. uh and uh, they would move away from reality and live in a completely digital mm-hmm. world by putting devices into their body they'll be half human and half uh, like a robot and through this they it is possible to maybe even eradicate diseases and be immortal <laughs> right oh my god please oh so something like uh, black mirror <laughs> yeah, yeah. it is going to be bad it is going to be extremely bad and uh, people are going to people are going to really trip bad so it's uh, like uh, it's going to be like everything i mean there will be victims and victors but i feel that there will be more victims than victors in this case and um, it is going to lead to a new that is if, if we last that long it's going to lead to a new elite a new kind of world i think that is almost like everything like it was as as like the scientific age like the this it's going to have its victims and victors some are going to die many are going to die actually uh and many more are going to get rich out of it many more are going to get poor out of it so it's going to be the whole it's going to be like a normal revolution yeah. um do you believe in reincarnation i can't rule it out currently uh it's not something i can uh, you know again like i said i don't know i genuinely don't know and it's something i'd like to find out uh, is it something that you would desire no never at all not at all <laughs> uh, you know once i uh, met a nihilist here in mangalore okay a guy he saw our uh, previous uh, conversation he listened to it and he's like i really liked your conversation with neil anand i want to meet right. you 
So I said, okay, uh-huh. we met at some uh, restaurant and uh, the first question that I asked him was, hey man, how are you? He's like, I'm not fine. I'm a nihilist. And, <laughs> and then we sat and we started talking and he's like, I'm a nihilist. I'm an antinatalist. I don't really like life. I don't want to commit suicide because I think it's not my thing. I, it's too, I'm scared of uh, committing suicide, but I just don't like living. And he goes on and on. And I tell him, right. uh, what if reincarnation is real? He's like, please don't tell me reincarnation is real. I just want to end this. But I told him what I'm about to tell you. Okay. Uh, there is a, a scientific study in University of Virginia. There's this man called uh, Jim B. Trucker. He, he's a child psychiatrist. So okay. what he is observed uh, is that uh, he has taken many children who... who say that they have been reincarnated and they remember their previous lives. They're like two, three years old. So he says that we are all reincarnated and we remember our right. previous lives till we are two, three years old. So okay. he conducted this experiment with hundreds of children. And uh, right. those kids say, you know, in my previous life, I was John from this state. And they go to that okay. state and they find a John and a lot of the wow. details match. <laughs> does this, okay. uh, does this piss you off? <laughs> because oh uh, to no end to no yeah. end like i i don't see and you know every i i think if you if you read every religion carefully they are basically trying to say the same thing mm. it all starts with god okay it mm. starts with who you are and that you are an endless entity and what not what not uh, and then it goes on to rules for life because it realizes that you know you cannot explain to people all this rubbish so every religion is basically an escape hatch it starts with an escape hatch and then it gives you rules about the flight and you know now no 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 so uh, yeah so it is like a it's like a parachute where they're trying to explain to you this is how you get out this is how you escape etc etc and people are like bro but i want to be on the plane you know and i want to go on this plane again and again so yeah reincarnation does really piss me off and i'm going to try as many methods as possible to ensure that it does not happen again oh. do you believe in life after death heaven hell something i think uh, if at all there is something like that then it is something that you have created uh, because even if you are in hell and you're chilling you're in your own zone then you're in heaven right or even if you're in heaven and uh, you're frustrated then you're in hell so it does not really matter i think it's all about it's all a question of mentality okay uh, for a lot of us life is beautiful it's not uh, that bad even with so much sorrow we feel like life is worth it and we're glad to be alive and we want to right. share the adventure of life the joys of sorrows the joys and sorrows of life by bringing another life into this world mm. is there anything uh, wrong with that <laughs> i absolutely think there is something wrong with that because uh, you know it's it's uh, it's not really about the joys than the sorrows in the, like uh, everyone feels sorrow everyone feels pain and that is that is just the beginning then you do not know whether your child how your child is going to be born there are 43000 things that can go ro- wrong with a child you know it's some some chromosomal issues this that uh, you're risking handicap you're risking uh, brain problems you know then there are things out to attack you like there are worms which could come out later on you know anything could happen and you're risking all these things just to give <clears throat> the child life so that he can experience it why why would a, why would anyone want to experience that they say the universe is experiencing humanity why would the why would humanity want to experience anything like anything bad would it be want to be would it want to be locked in a pedophile's basement would it want to be smuggled to kenya you know stuff like that but uh, that's <coughs> statistical me, sure sure <coughs> ha go on but that's Sorry. statistically very rare right majority of the people actually don't mind being alive well uh, i think they are majority people uh, majority of the people are in illusion uh, they do not realize what is what is around them they do not realize their own life forget anything and a majority of people are basically repeating what others have said you ask them for the logic they they don't have a logic uh you know even if they said that this is my belief and this is what i strongly truly believe in i would respect that but most people are said most people say 
this is just the way i operate this is how it work you know and i'm like no that's not <coughs> i hope it's not omicron or something <laughs> i hope not but i i am alone in a room yeah. so i've been alone for the past two days cuz i just came back from traveling so let's okay see. yeah it's it could be anything but uh, yeah. you know finally i want to ask we are alive and we are going to live for a very long time how do we make life worth living how do we make i think uh, the main thing is to explore your own life or uh, you have to realize that your life is basically <coughs> something only that is left to be explored and that you have to realize that you must know as much as much as much as much as possible before you decide to do anything before you reach your before you reach your deathbed or before you decide to die or before you decide to do anything like you want to do business just make sure it is a process of self discovery and in my discovery i've learned that it should be a process of losing things lose your desires lose your attachments lose all this and you will be free you that is where true freedom comes not you know where i have a million dollars to do whatever i want that is just that is just very superficial freedom and when you actually have that million dollars you won't feel that satisfied why is that because you've not truly freed yourself from that million dollars you're still attached to it yeah, yeah. you know you are a nihilist but a lot of the things that you say it sounds very stoic people prefer yeah. stoicism over nihilism because it stoicism has all the good things about nihilism without so much talk about death right yeah so wh- why so, why choose to be a nihilist when you can be a stoic instead well uh, a stoic is is more a question of how to live life a uh, mm. nihilism is more a thing about you know what is really going to happen to you and at a very base level it's saying that you came from zero and are going to zero and that the truth is you're either going to be buried in the ground or you're going to um, you're going to be lit on fire it's not about it's not really a treatise on how to live life yes i've incorporated stoicism and what not and uh, i i don't really read much of it so a lot of these are actually my beliefs my thoughts uh, but if you if you live as a nihilist knowing what is going to happen to you knowing that death is coming you know and you're walking straight towards death uh, and that all your body really knows is death and that you're not really living but you're dying you know uh, if you realize these things i think you can live a much much better life a much happier life personally do you have any <laughs> Do you have any desires or goals? I um no, I have no desires. I've never really had any desires. And any desires or goals uh I have forced upon myself in the sense of because, you know, it's a cool thing to do because my parents wanted me to do it or uh, you know, it was just some pressure that I felt, peer pressure for that matter. It was all that, but I when when I realized that I really had nothing I wanted to do, and i never really ever wanted to do anything i just wanted to even that i didn't want to do i just did that because i was there i wanted to play around chill you know mm. have fun enjoy even that i just did because i was alive so no i i don't have any desire no ambition nothing yeah, you speak very honestly and you speak very directly you say say it as it is you don't care what the other person is saying have you lost a lot of friends because of this um i think i'd say I'd, i've gained a lot of friends because uh you know so many people wanted to say this so many people wanted to speak like this or so so many people want someone else to speak like this for them because for whatever reason i understand them because they are introverts or because they are shy they are scared whatever so yeah i think i've gained more good friends than lost fake ones and uh, it it was totally worth it but overall this whole generation my generation thinks like this so yeah i've i've gained a, I've some really interesting people and i think i've lost more relatives than anything uh, because they are in uh, deep set illusions about who they are and what they have achieved and and i'm like yeah i i i didn't really want them in my life anyway so, yeah. <laughs> good riddance yeah same same here even i have a very <laughs> strange relationship with my relatives which is why i find it very awkward to go to family functions how do you go- act or how do you tolerate when you go to family functions oh i love family functions because <laughs> uh everyone has such a massive ego and i'm just like yeah like i put a state status up recently saying your ego is my netflix 
so <laughs> literally like it is just i just enjoy people's you know poking people's ego and people uh, know what i've done obviously it's a world famous thing so they'll come up to me with photos of baby see my uh, you know my nephew my niece my this by that see how cute the baby is and i'll be like oh but your cousin died last month uh, do you have no value for that They're like you know do you have no value for the uh, su- 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 sufferings of society and the ego just sort of crumbles so now i'm being invited to lesser and lesser family functions much to my uh, <laughs> i'm quite bored and i'm just like i'm really sad because you know i don't get to abuse egos but uh, okay it's a price to pay i guess <laughs> Yeah man I'm I'm done do you have anything more to say or more to add I think I'm done too man this is quite a comprehensive sort of and and very random like on random topics so I'm quite happy that way <laughs> Yeah thank you so much that brings this uh, podcast to an end thank you once again thank for you, coming on the labyrinth yes, yes. It's my pleasure thank you Pratham